The new Acura NSX is all about immediacy. It uses electric torque, clasp leading chassis rigidity, and next level all wheel drive electronics to ensure it responds to inputs with urgency, it changes direction the second you ask it to, and the power hits almost telepathically. Does anyone else see the irony here? I mean, for a car that looks and goes so damn fast, it sure took its sweet time to get here. Then again, as they say, you can't rush greatness. So is that what we've got here? I'm about to find out. Because it took so long to arrive, we've had plenty of time to digest all the details of this Acura supercar. From the six cylinders and two turbos to the three electric motors and nine speeds on its dual clutch transmission. And then there are the really big digits, like how much power it makes and just how much it costs just so civilized. I mean, Acura actually says it's the quietest vehicle out of any of its competitors, and I can definitely believe it. On the center console here, there's a little knob you can turn with four different control settings, and the basic one is actually called quiet mode. This is, after all, a hybrid. You can then switch the car into sport, sport plus, and even track modes, and that makes everything in the car more responsive, stiffer, and yes, even louder. Unfortunately, it never really gets loud enough for my taste. And even at full throttle, you're not really hearing the exhaust out. Instead, inside the cabin here, you're really hearing the air intake noise, which Acura actually sort of pipes into the cabin right behind your head, a lot like the way McLaren does it in their cars. Another area where the car did sort of leave me lacking was the launch control system. Sure, it's fast, but I felt like there was a bit of a lull from the first sort of boost right off the line to when it actually really takes off. It doesn't pull like a 911 turbo in that way. Whether it's the super rigid chassis or the magnetic ride shock absorbers, you just float along the road here. This car is incredibly comfortable to drive. Acura is making a really big deal with this car about the sight lines. Now, I know that that's not nearly as sexy as big horsepower numbers, but let me put it to you this way. If you can see out of a car really easily, it gives you a lot of confidence, and confidence in a sports car is something you definitely want. I mean, they spent a ton of engineering effort into making a tiny A-pillar, and you can see it right here. I mean, it really is very thin, gives you great visibility. On top of all that, the dash sits really low, and something that I'm super happy about being a tall driver is that the roof doesn't overhang over top of your view. When I pull up to a light in this car, I don't have to sort of duck down to see what color it is or when it's going to change. I just look up. It's that easy. At six foot one, I have plenty of room in here, although I should point out when I get in and out of the car, I do have to sort of duck. Now, speaking about the cabin, it's amazing how true Acura was to the idea of the original NSX. I mean, when you consider all the futuristic technologies that drive this vehicle, and when you look around in here, it's amazing how simplistic and clean it all is and how easy it all is to use. I really love the look of these digital gauges and this matte carbon fiber steering wheel is super exotic. Unfortunately, both the tilt and telescopic functions are actually manual, which is strange for a car that costs as much and is so fancy. At the same time, there's some other little bits of switch gear inside the cabin, which I think aren't quite as premium as they probably should be. Driving around town, the electric motor in this vehicle means you never really have to use first gear. Now, as a result, even though it is a dual clutch transmission, there's none of the jerkiness you normally associate with those types of cars. I have to say, this has got to be the most livable supercar I have ever driven. So is it worth it? Well, it's certainly not expensive when you consider its competitive set of vehicles, but we're still talking about $156,000 to start for an Acura. Let me start by saying I might be the wrong person to answer this. I haven't mentioned the styling of this car yet because it's totally subjective, but for me, it's probably worth the cost of entry based just on the looks. Of course, you're getting so much more, and I'm not just talking about supercar performance you can live with and drive every day. This car does such an incredible job of making it all feel so natural that it's easy to forget when you're driving the Acura NSX that you're driving the very first in the next generation of exotic cars.